Welcome everybody. Welcome to the Wood Carbon Seminars. Um, uh, today we are, are really excited to have you here. My name is Kate Simonen and I'm going to start with an overview of the seminar series and then uh, I will launch into our speakers for the day. We're going to go through some basic logistics and um, then we have our three speakers. The introduction I'm going to give an introduction to the Wood Carbon Seminars in a broader context. Uh, Cynthia West will be presenting on trees, forestry, and carbon 101. And Kent Wheeler will be presenting on manufacturing and the forest products industry. Uh, at, as we wrap up, we'll um, make sure everybody has access to the course page um, and do some prep for next week's discussion section. So these, this webinar is being recorded. We ask that you keep uh, your self on mute and video blocked. Uh, um, uh, there is a chat function, and so do feel free to use the chat uh, to uh, um, have conversations amongst yourselves, although the speakers will not be moderating the chat function uh, today. Uh, we do have a survey that will be sent out at the end of the session, and that's where we'd like you to really identify key questions that you want the uh, speakers to discuss next week. So this week we'll be giving presentations, Next week, we'll be hosting a uh, discussion, uh, and um, we will, the survey is your way of making sure that your, uh, your comments are integrated into what discussion topics we help, will hold. So um, we have basic disclaimer that um, we've invited a range of distinguished guests, and their opinions are their own, and we welcome them uh, to share them. I'd like to give you a little bit of a background on the Carbon Leadership Forum. As a Carbon Leadership Forum hosted at the University of Washington, we envision a transformed, decarbonized building industry in order to help build better buildings for a better planet. We have a, a focus on the emissions from building material manufacturing or embodied carbon. Uh, we create um, fundamental research, uh, but also um, develop resources for the building sector, uh, leveraging a network um, um, in order to identify uh, initiatives to help advance uh, building decarbonization. So this series will both be uh, a live session in which we are um, interacting with our guests, but we will in the end post it, um, post it as a resource for future use. We also have an online community with focus groups and regional hubs being forming uh, where there's uh, discussions around uh, issues of um, building sector decarbonization, and we welcome you to join that you can access that by joining our mailing list. The Carbon Leadership Forum is supported by industry sponsors as well as um, volunteer, uh, volunteer donations from individuals. So today we're going to be uh, going through three, the first three uh, topics of this seminar. This is a, a, an eight-week seminar in four segments. So the first topic is general introduction. And then, uh, and then we'll dive more into LCA issues of both forest products and, and uh, the forest itself. So this first uh, session is really about making sure we're all on the same page on core, core fundamental concepts that we'll be developing in more detail over the coming weeks. So again, my name is Kate Simonen. I'm an architect and a structural engineer. I practiced for about 15 years before joining the University of Washington. And I'm, uh, my research is driven by understanding building material manufacturing impacts using life cycle assessment and in particular looking to reduce carbon emissions. This is driven by the urgency of action. Global climate targets identify that we need to get to uh, as much as more than 50% of greenhouse gas emissions reduction in the next 10 years and down to zero by 2050 or before. And simultaneously, the building sector's magnitude of impact, if we look at the impact of the building sector, uh, it can be as much as um, or between 38 and 50% uh, of impacts when we include both the impacts from operating buildings and making their materials. So uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page on terminology, we're really going to be focusing here on embodied carbon, the emissions from manufacturing, transportation, um, uh, uh, installation, maintenance, and end of life. Uh, 
So those the emissions that take place during the material life cycle, uh, and uh, not focusing on operating carbon or the carbon emissions from lighting, heating, and cooling buildings. But if we want to look at a total carbon impact of buildings, we have to bring those two together. And, and so then when we look at trying to understand what are the carbon impacts of building material manufacturing, we want to look at where, how do we make carbon smart material decisions. We, we can choose between materials. We can choose, choose between suppliers. Um, if we look at, at wood, we can think about how do, what is a carbon smart forest product. Um, and then what is carbon smart forestry and what are the relationships between the two? And is there um, something different between carbon smart and, and climate smart? So what, uh, what's happening there? So when we look uh, for high quality academic references like Richard Scarry, we can see that there's a lot of things that happen in the life cycle of a forest and a forest product. And when we look at what those emissions are, we can see that there's um, both biogenic carbon that's um, uh, part of the growth cycle and photosynthesis of trees, but there's also biogenic carbon that's emitted when trees rot um, or are burnt. Uh, there's fossil carbon emitted when we plant and harvest forest products. Uh, and similarly, as we uh, go into the uh, manufacturing of forest products, we're emitting carbon through um, the activities of getting there, unless we can get all of them done by a water wheel. Uh, or, and we're also storing carbon or sequestering carbon uh, in the products themselves. So there is physical carbon in the materials that was extracted from the atmosphere during growth. And, and how, do we, how do we understand and account for all these things uh, in, when we look at making decisions in the building sector? And so we start to... Uh, um, you know, as we try to understand this, we can see that it's a complicated system. There's forests and there's the products themselves, there are how long they last, there's the choices that we make in a building. And, and how, do we, how do we understand better how to make the connections between forest products and forests uh, and, and the decisions we make as, uh, in the building sector? We can do um, some interpretation of data. This is an, um, an analysis that um, the engineers at Arup did, trying to understand the relative magnitude of impacts. And they, they, they're indicating that by the width of the arrow, the carbon emissions that are both um, um, coming in and out in the carbon cycle of a forest and the carbon um, coming in and out in forest product manufacturing, they're, you know, this is starting to say that the forests matter more than the forest product itself. Uh, so that, you know, that's a, that's a question then. How do we if we're trying to make good decisions as building um, industry professionals, what, what are our choices about the use of wood? Um, how do they impact the forest and vice versa? When we look at picking between uh, material systems, we've done research at the Carbon Leadership Forum trying to understand sort of some big picture questions like whether or not uh, wood or a concrete office building is a, a, a better solution. And we can find, uh, we, we find that we get to some questions. So one is, uh, if you look on the left here, this is um, uh, the volume of the slab that's used, the beam and the slab in a floor sim system, and how many beams are used between, uh, between girders. So if you just have girders with um, wood spanning behind them, you'll, then you have no intermediate beams, or if you have lots of intermediate beams. And so what we see is when we do an optimization study, uh, that we can have um, as two times the amount of wood in a floor system if we pick an inefficient system or one that is an efficient system. So that when we talk about optimizing, we need to also make sure we're using the right amount of materials. And then when we start to understand orders of magnitude, uh, you know, we can see that it, you know, in, in some interpretations of the data, the, um, a carbon uh, wood building could be a higher carbon footprint than a concrete building. And then when we dive into data about the wood uh, products themselves and we think of what are their impacts from manufacturing and end of life and this carbon that's stored in the wood products, you know, we can look and see that the, you know, there's uh, relative, um, there's more carbon stored in products than are emitted in making them. So that comes to some conclusions that wood, uh, wood products are carbon negative or a carbon sink. Um, then 
if we look in and add in the emissions from burning biomass, we get slight changes. So I'm not going to go into this all too detailed, but I'm starting to, I'm wanting to say that these are the types of questions that we have at the Carbon Leadership Forum about how to interpret this data. Should we be including this carbon stored in the wood product uh, when we look at an upfront early carbon assessment? Should we wait until uh, time, until the trees would have been able to regrow or looking at the end of life of the building. So how do, how do we deal with biogenic carbon and, um, in, in an evaluating buildings? Uh, this is the, one of the key things that we're looking to get more insights from by bringing in these guests and, and talking about these issues uh, in this series. Uh, so when, we, uh, when building sector uh, people try to um, evaluate uh, um, the life cycle impacts of a building, there's, there's different phases of that work. So currently, um, if you're looking at schematic design or design development phases, that's when you're looking to decide uh, how much building to build, whether or not you use one system or another. And those are using whole building life cycle assessment tools. Uh, but what we, um, what we found is, it, um, is that there were not good tools available once you knew what building you were building to try and decide which manufacturer you were going to supply a different material. Are you going to buy your carpet from manufacturer A or manufacturer B, can you include uh, carbon assessment in that or not? Uh, and, and so the embodied carbon and construction calculator uh, was developed in order to sort of close the gap between um, design phase work and um, as-built conditions and what you actually per purchase. So this, uh, this tool is um, free and open access. So if you go to buildingtransparency.org, you can log in and access the tool. It's being supported by a quite diverse range of, uh, of um, sponsors, from foundations to industry trade organizations to architects and engineers and manufacturers. And this wood carbon seminar is specifically supported uh, with um, uh, contributions from both Google and the American Wood Council. So how do we understand and interpret the data well, and how do we take that data and, and bring it to procurement decisions? So if I want to build a wood building, how do I know that the building is um, promoting climate smart decisions at the forest scale as well as the, as well as the building scale? Uh, in the EC3 tool, we're leaning on environmental product declarations that are reporting um, um, Life cycle assessment impacts, these are typically cradle to gate, so the impacts that happen from um, extraction of materials to the gate of the factory. And, uh, and then, we, you know, we're looking at them and trying to understand how we can interpret them. And some of the key things is that EPDs are not uh, super precise. Um, they're more like miles per gallon on a car. They're estimates of the emissions that took place during manufacturing based on rules, like a product category rule. Uh, we know there, there's no variability in them, uh, but we're assuming they're directionally accurate. So if you have, um, you know, one or two significant digits of uh, precision, is probably about what we have. Uh, and so in the EC3 tool, there's options for sorting materials based on performance. So here I'm showing concrete because there are um, thousands of different concrete EPDs available, and that lets you um, identify what um, uh, what products are available within your region and what are the ranges of carbon footprint. Uh, uh, you could do this with um, other, other materials as well. And then you look, and then we're also assessing the, the um, uncertainty uh, um, of the EPDs, trying to understand if it's manufacturer or plant or um, product specific. How, much, how, how precise is the data behind that environmental product declaration? So in the tool, we're trying to do um, both of those things um, to help people identify where you can roll up your building to understand the opportunities for improvement. So within in this example here, we have structural steel showing that if you buy the higher product in the market, you have a high number and you have a low number, so you have an opportunity for improvement. Uh, in the wood industry, we have fewer product um, or manufacturer-specific EPDs. We have industry-wide EPDs. Uh, and so one of the questions we're trying to dive through in this session is, what are the important differentiators between manufacturers? If we're looking to pick the most um, uh, carbon um, or climate smart wood product, how do, how do we do that? And how, how can we help to advance the use of life cycle assessment 
and or other tools to help us make those decisions. So we're really coming to the question, you know, is it carbon smart or climate smart? Can we use life cycle assessment data to uh, make these decisions now? How's the best way that we can help uh, drive towards a global systemic change? Uh, how can we collectively understand the data better uh, so that we can um, make um, good recommendations to our uh, clients or policymakers or even have strong co um, communications with uh, with manufacturers and suppliers, so that we're all talking the same, the same language, uh, and um, able to act better uh, together.